In today's video, I am going to share my journey with overtraining. As somebody who is in their early 40s now, I have a lot to say about this, and I am somebody who is guilty of overtraining for many decades of my life. I love fitness, but I think I've taken it a little too far at times, and it has hurt my health instead of helped my health. And today I'm gonna to talk about my journey, some symptoms I've experienced and how I've changed my fitness routine to promote good health instead of wrecking my health. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Tina Hoppert. I am the woman behind the Carrots and Cake brand and Carrots and Cake is all about having your carrots and cake too. So it's about finding that healthy balance with a little bit of fun thrown in. So today I am going to talk about my journey with overtraining. And now that I'm in my early 40s, I can look back at my 20s and 30s and literally decades of my life and admit that I did a little too much on the fitness front and it harmed my health. So I'm going to share my journey with you and I am also going to share some things that really helped me make the transition to a recovering over-exerciser and somebody who takes their health and wellness a lot more seriously and doesn't crush her body anymore with too many workouts. Okay, so let's start at the beginning as far as my overtraining journey goes. So if you saw my previous video about why I quit Orange Theory, that gives you a lot of details of some of the symptoms I had gone through, kind of where I was with my lifestyle and whatnot, and how joining a high intensity workout routine like Orange Theory really like caused a lot of negative symptoms. And of course, I don't hate Orange Theory. I think Orange Theory is a lot of fun. It's just the type of workout it was and what was going on in my life at the time, it, it was just too intense and I had so many symptoms. So definitely check out that video if you haven't watched it. Um, it might resonate with you if you're somebody who's doing a lot of that high intensity training. The reason why I am so passionate about sharing this overtraining stuff is because I fell into the trap so many times over the years. And I look back and there's so many times where I just took my love for fitness to the max. And I didn't really realize how much it was hurting my health until the symptoms were just out of control as far as my hormones being out of balance, my moods, my energy, um, my hair falling out, gaining weight when that was the last thing that I wanted to happen. But I just feel like I'm not alone when it comes to this because especially in like this diet culture world, we are told, you know, more is better, more exercise is better, go harder, go faster, um, you know, pick up the intensity, you know, go big or go home. We hear that all the time. And I think that mentality can really hurt us in the long run. And I just feel like somebody who has lived through this and has crushed their body and has overcome it and then has fallen into it again. I just feel like I'm not alone. And I think just from working with different women over the years, one-on-one, you know, connecting with women on social media and my blog and podcast and wherever else, I have just heard so many stories that are so similar to mine. And that's why I keep talking about this. I just think it's something that we need to be aware of and, I think exercise inherently isn't a bad thing. It's just, you can abuse the hell out of it. Um, and I have been that person. So <laughs> that's why I'm sharing here. And I hope this video helps you as far as looking at your exercise, looking at what you're doing, being honest with yourself, and then maybe making some changes if you think you're doing a little too much and hurting yourself in the long run. Okay, so let's backtrack a little bit to my early days of overtraining. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's hard to admit this, that I have been overtraining for decades of my life. So I think where I've always been active, you know, I played soccer as a kid. I ran track. I played tennis in high school. Um, I even played soccer in college, you know, just on the club team. Um, and I was a runner. I ran, you know, with my girlfriends at college and everything. So I've always kind of been active, but I think where I really fell in love with exercise is when I started training for half marathons and marathons. And obviously that type of training requires a lot of time and energy, time on your feet. And I think with a training 
program for like a half marathon or marathon, you're running multiple days a week. And obviously running is very high intensity. Um, but I would be running anywhere from four to six days a week training for a half marathon or marathon. And of course, I just thought, you know, I needed to get the miles in. The miles were so, so important. Um, and that was the thing. I was tracking the miles, you know, keeping track of all my workouts and everything um, and not realizing how much those workouts were exhausting me. Like I remember doing my long runs on the weekend and just wanting to lay on the couch for the rest of the day. And honestly, just doing nothing else because I was so exhausted from running, you know, two hours or three hours or however long I was on my feet training for whatever endurance event it was. So most of my twenties were devoted to long distance running. I was running marathons, half marathons. I ran three marathons at least a half dozen half marathons, but a lot, a lot of running and a lot of time on my feet, a lot of ignoring symptoms and yeah, just kind of crushing my body. I mean, I was also getting overuse injuries. I was having hip injuries, knee injuries, foot injuries. It was just reoccurring because I was doing that repetitive running movement over and over again. But again, just ignoring the symptoms, ignoring the symptoms. And then I got to my early 20 or early 30s and and I don't know, I just kind of got sick of running or I just needed a change. Um, and I discovered CrossFit. My husband actually, not to say that he dragged me to a class, but he invited me to a CrossFit class with him. And I remember being very, very intimidated by the workout. I wasn't sure if it was for me. It seemed really scary. Um, but honestly, for my first CrossFit workout, I fell in love with it. And I went in head first. Um, this is kind of what I do when I discover <laughs> new fitness routines that I like. I just, I love it. I love fitness. It's so fun. Makes me feel good during the moment and I love a challenge. Um, but yeah, went head first in on CrossFit. I was going six days a week um, with one rest day. And the only reason it was a rest day was because the gym was closed. I probably would have went seven days. Um, but CrossFit can be a very intense workout and I push myself to the max. I mean, there were many times that I was redlining. I was just going all out, just trying to compete against other women in the gym, compete against myself. I'm very much a type A personality. So that type of workout, I just wanted to do my best be my best and continually improve. And I still love CrossFit. I approach it very differently nowadays. It's definitely not as, as intense workout as it used to be. Um, but in my thirties, I definitely went all out on the CrossFit stuff. And again, just ignoring a lot of the symptoms. I think that's where I probably dealt with the most hormonal imbalance um, was during my thirties. I mean, obviously hormones change, you know, as you get older, but I was on the pill and just adding this high intensity exercise. Like my hormones were such a disaster in my thirties, but I can tell you CrossFit definitely made me stronger, um, changed my body composition for the better. I have so many good things to say about CrossFit, but definitely was overdoing it. And then to add to that mid thirties, I combined running marathons and CrossFit. And that was something else. I mean, I can't believe I even survived that. I had just had a baby um, and I was invited to run the Boston Marathon. Basically, I got a bib to run the Boston Marathon for free. And being from Boston, it was an opportunity I couldn't turn down. I mean, I've always wanted to run the Boston Marathon. I'm not a super fast runner, so I don't know if I ever would have qualified, but just somebody giving me a bib to run the Boston Marathon, I just couldn't say no. I just really, really wanted to do it. And of course, I love challenging myself. I love fitness challenges. Um, so when I was 30, almost 35, I had, like I said, just had a baby a couple months before I decided to embark on marathon training, but didn't want to give up the CrossFit because I had made such good friends there at CrossFit. I didn't want to use, lose that connection to my friends and the community. And also I had seen what CrossFit had done for my body as far as making me stronger and made me a better runner. I did have fewer injuries. Um, once I was able to put some muscle on my body and, you know, take care of it a little bit better. Um, so going into marathon training, I think I've probably was in better shape. Um, but the combination of marathon training and CrossFit, oh my gosh, so exhausted, so many hormonal symptoms. I feel like I was, I don't, oh man, I don't know how this is going to come out. Kind of a miserable person. 
That's probably like not the best way to describe it. But the amount of energy I was devoting to fitness was crazy. I was probably working out two hours a day some days. Like I would run to CrossFit, you know, run three to five miles to CrossFit, do an hour workout and then run home, you know, three to five miles, depending on, you know, what my routine was for the day, trying to get in all the miles and sticking with my CrossFit workouts. It was insanity. I'm surprised I wasn't in worse shape back then, um, especially with all my ulcerative colitis stuff. And I mean, it makes sense. Like looking back, no wonder my body didn't heal. No wonder I had hormonal problems. I was just crushing my body on so many levels. So that's a little background of my overtraining story through my 20s and 30s and 40s. Um, now I'm in my 40s, I exercise very, very differently. Um, I pretty much stick to strength training and CrossFit workouts, which I know a lot of people think CrossFit is super duper intense, but really the CrossFit where I work out, um, it's pretty low key. A lot of us are in our 40s. So I think a lot of us work out very differently, um, but the workouts, you know, the workout of the day is not more than 15 minutes most of the time. And then the rest of the time is devoted to stretching, mobility, strength training, things like that. So for me right now, CrossFit is, is fine. It's not too, too intense. And then I do strength training workouts in my basement at home. And obviously all of this overtraining has very much inspired me to create programs for my community and my clients. Um, definitely check them out if you're somebody that feels like you are falling into this overtraining trap because sometimes just going back to basics and sticking to the strength training with a little bit of walking, maybe some yoga, some low key cardio um, can be the perfect thing to help you recover. So check out my programs. I have Strong Made Simple, Strong Made Simple 2.0, which is the continuation of that strength training program. And then I have one called Sweat Made Simple, which is very much CrossFit and inspired, but those quick and dirty workouts that aren't super long and super intense, but at the same time, you are lifting weights faster and getting a good sweat on. So be sure to check those out. So let's talk about the symptoms of overtraining. You might be wondering, am I overtraining? Is this too much? I can't really tell. And you are not alone here. I definitely question this constantly because there were some days that I would work out and I would feel okay for the most part. And then there were some workouts that would crush me where I would feel awful. And then I was questioning myself again and again, like, is this too much? Do I need to change my workouts? And like I mentioned, I mostly ignored the symptoms because I was having so much fun during the workouts. And during the actual workout, I felt pretty good, which makes sense because you're getting your cortisol up, you're getting your adrenaline up, you're going to feel good temporarily. But I think the biggest sign and symptom for me was feeling really fatigued. So during the workout, felt okay. After the workout, didn't feel great. And then probably like 90 minutes to two hours after that workout, I would feel really tired. Like I needed a cup of coffee, um, that I needed a nap, that I just wanted to sit on the couch. I was totally unmotivated, like had brain fog, couldn't focus at work. But yeah, that fatigue just, it just set in hard. Um, I think also related to that, like having trouble getting out of bed in the morning there, I've always been a morning person. And when I was overtraining, getting out of bed in the morning just felt awful. Like I would set my alarm. I'd have to, you know, shut it off. Like it would just take me so long to get out of bed and then I would need coffee, but really just like dragging my ass. <laughs> like I just did not have that same energy and motivation that I had in the past. It was just, it was too much for my body. I also think with that um, sleep issues, um, waking up in the middle of the night, not staying asleep, waking up hungry because of low blood sugar, um, any blood sugar issues in general where you feel like you're kind of on that blood sugar roller coaster where you know, you're suffering from low blood sugar, you eat something, you feel a little bit better, you feel a little bit energized, but then you're dealing with that roller coaster of like high blood sugar, low blood sugar, high low blood sugar, low blood sugar, all the crazy cravings that go along with high and low blood sugar. I think those are definitely key ones like craving carbs and sugar. Um, also headaches. I think headaches can definitely be a sign of doing a little bit too much can obviously rate relate to dehydration, um, electrolyte loss, things like that, especially if you're somebody that's doing that endurance training, um, weight gain, which I have talked about as far as what happened to me during my orange theory experience. Um, I gained weight pretty quickly and it was mostly in my like belly hip 
butt area, um, which is very hormonal, at least for me. Um, but that was a big, a big surprise to me because I was doing so much running and so much activity. It didn't make sense that I was gaining weight, but it was too stressful. I mean, that's ultimately what it was. And it was totally screwing with um, my blood sugar and my cravings and how much I was eating. Also just being moody, um, irritable. I do feel like I was just kind of a cranky person. And I think it was because I had low energy, low fatigue. I was tired. Um, my periods were a disaster. My PMS was a disaster. My cycles got a little bit wonky. Sometimes they were long, sometimes they were short. Hair loss, I was losing my hair at times. Again, just doing too much and not fueling properly. Those overuse injuries, um, hip injuries, knee injuries, um, CrossFit, I threw out my back two different times. And really just, yeah, just a lack of motivation. I think that was the other thing that just surprised me. Like I used to be somebody that was so into fitness and I would do all my workouts and then just over time they became less and less fun, I guess. It was more like a chore and something that I had to do. But yeah, those are kind of like the common symptoms of overtraining. If any of those resonate with you, could definitely be a time to look a little differently at what you're doing and maybe make some adjustments to your workouts. Okay, so that is basically my journey with overtraining in a nutshell. And I wanted to share how I was able to recover from overtraining. I really do think this is something that I've put in the past as far as falling into this trap again and again. I just saw how much overtraining affected my health in a very, very negative way. That nowadays I approach my workouts very, very differently. Um, and I do think I have a better grasp on what works well for me and what doesn't work for me when it comes to my fitness routine. Um, so I wanted to share some things that really helped me make that transition because I know it's not easy. I mean, it was literally decades of my life that I overtrained, recovered, overtrained, recovered. It's like I didn't learn my lesson. Um, so now I do feel like I'm at a point where I have learned my lesson and I'm doing a lot better as far as the overtraining goes. And I just wanted to share, you know, what has really helped me and what has made a difference. Okay, so how do you cut back on fitness when you love it so much? So I have been there, obviously, love to work out. It's a lot of fun, um, but too much of anything can be a bad thing. So I think the biggest thing that helped me make this transition or at least to recover from overtraining was changing my mindset about it and being really open and non-judgmental of what I'm doing. Um, I think I put a lot of weight into my fitness and how much I was doing. And, you know, the more I did, the more it said about me as a person. So there was definitely like a self-worth component. So like the more running I did, the better I was, the more miles I had for the week, the better it was. And obviously we know better or more is not always better when it comes to fitness, especially if you were crushing your body. Um, but that mindset shift was, was really important for me and really focusing on my health instead of all the metrics. Um, and that was one thing that I stopped. I stopped tracking how many miles I was running. I stopped tracking how many steps I was getting per day. I stopped recording my CrossFit workouts. I just went there and worked out. I didn't track anything. Um, so I think stopping with all that recording and tracking and everything made a really, really big deal. And then focusing on the workout as something I was doing to better my health and promote my health and um, make me stronger. I think all of that was really important. I think in the past it was a lot of oh, I need to burn off these calories from drinking beer and pizza, or I was really bad all weekend, so now I need to get back on track with a really hard, sweaty workout. So really changing my mindset around workouts and why I was exercising was really important. So nowadays, I look at strength training as a way to build muscle and to be functionally fit as I you know, get into my 40s. Um, and just being a strong woman who can 
you know, carry her groceries in from the car in one trip or carry my son up and down the stairs. Like I just want to be a strong, healthy person that is capable and I don't need to PR all the time. I don't need to beat other people at the gym. I think that was another thing too, was to stop comparing myself um, to other people and stop competing with other people. Um, I still kind of compete with myself, but at a lower level, <laughs> It's hard. It's hard being a type A personality with all of this, but really just essentially like lowering my expectations as far as what I was expecting from myself in my workouts and not attaching so much of it to my self-worth and what it said about me. It was just a workout. It wasn't defining me. Um, it didn't matter if I didn't run 20 miles in a week. It, you know, it was just a workout. It was a way to break a sweat, to see some of my friends at CrossFit or whatever it was. Um, and just, yeah, to feel good and healthy. And that really was what was most important. Also related to that, I think it was important to remember why I decided to cut back on my fitness because the symptoms didn't go away overnight and sometimes they would improve, sometimes they would get worse, but I think reminding myself again and again why I was making changes was really important and it kept me going as far as not running back to the gym, not trying to do extra workouts, you know, when I felt like I needed to burn calories or whatever it was, but really reminding myself like this is for my health. I am changing what I am doing because I want to feel better. Um, and I knew, you know, trying to get out of bed in the morning and feeling like garbage, that was a hundred percent because I was going too hard during my workouts and I didn't want to drag my ass out of bed every single morning. So I think that was definitely motivation as far as seeing those symptoms slowly, but surely improve and just sticking to what I knew was ultimately going to help me. Like I knew doing less was probably what I needed and just sticking to that routine, like doing my strength training, walking, doing a lot less, um, and just remembering it was going to take time to start to feel better. Um, but anytime those symptoms would start to diminish, it really was motivation to continue to be kind to my body and not overdo it. Another thing that really helped me make this transition from over-exercising to being a bit more moderate with my workouts was really listening to my body, which I know is cheesy to hear. I know we've heard it again and again. And I mean, as you heard with my story through my 20s and my 30s, I literally ignored so many symptoms of overtraining and just kept pushing myself so, so hard during my workout. So nowadays I really do take the time to kind of analyze and like scan my body before a workout. And I'll ask myself, you know, the same few questions to kind of gauge, you know, where I am that day and how I'm feeling. So, you know, going into a workout, I'll ask myself like, is this workout gonna be fun? Like, am I going to enjoy this? Do I feel like lifting heavy things today? Do I feel like sweating and having my heart rate increase? And if I can't say yes to those questions, I'll take a rest day or I'll really dial down the intensity of that workout. I mean, I just think in the past, I would just push through, go all out, go super duper hard, and it didn't benefit me in the long run. So now slowing down, um, being really honest with myself about how I'm feeling that day before going into a workout really helps because I don't have to go all out with every single workout. And sometimes just moving and just, you know, moving your body and enjoying the workout, you don't have to crush it every single day. And I think that's what I've realized. And listening to my body really helps me better what I'm doing as far as building up my body instead of crushing it all the time. One more thing to add, because this is a trap that I definitely fell into as far as over-exercising goes and being a little in denial maybe. Um, but I hear this from clients all the time. I was definitely this person too, where I used exercise as quote unquote stress relief, um, as a way to manage my stress, to deal with my anxiety. Um, and I said that all the time, you know, I would go out for a run and I would feel better afterwards, which was true. Um, but I think again, too much of a good thing can be really stressful on the body. So if you're somebody that's using these workouts as a way to deal with stress, I would take a good 
honest look at what you're doing and see if there's a way to manage stress in other parts of your life. Um, because when I was overtraining, I definitely wasn't managing my work stress, my relationship stress, my childhood trauma stress, whatever it was. I really was ignoring a lot of those emotions. And it wasn't until I got into talk therapy on the regular that I started to put these connections together, that my workouts actually weren't de-stressing me, they were probably stressing me out more. Because if you think about what you're doing when you're doing a high intensity workout, you're going for a run, you're getting on a spin bike, whatever it is, um, you're basically increasing your cortisol, which is our stress hormone. Um, so for me, there was definitely a lot of <laughs> denial, avoiding things. Um, and really when I started to make those connections, I think things got a lot better as far as figuring out other ways to manage my stress and not overdoing it when it came to my workouts. Okay, so that wraps up my journey with overtraining. I hope you found this information helpful and I hope what I said resonates with you and your fitness journey. And if you're somebody that is really questioning if you are overtraining and maybe overdoing it a little bit, definitely check out my fitness programs. They were so much inspired by my own journey with overtraining. And now I really focus on strength training and not overstressing my body with too much. And the workouts in my programs are very straightforward. They're not super long. All you need is a set of dumbbells to do them. And I really do think they can help you get results without exercising a million hours a week and stressing out your body. So be sure to check those out.